Alles ganz normal. Herr Mausklick Komplimente machen. Normal. Bei Schnupfen Dr. Online fragen. Normal. Sein Essen mit der ganzen Welt teilen. Steckdosensüchtig sein. Normal, nur mit Punkt und Komma zu lächeln. Zu Hause zu sein, wo das WLAN sich automatisch verbindet. Und seinen Followern mitzuteilen, wo man gerade ist. Warum sollte es dann nicht normal sein, online über Geld zu sprechen und Bankprodukte zu bewerten? Warum soll es dann nicht normal sein, online fahren? A warm welcome to the ITB My Stay. And I'm delighted that you've come along to hear the joint presentation by Felix Undeutsch and myself. Pleased to see so very many of you. Just by way of introduction, the title of our presentation sounds a bit provocative. If you digitalize a crappy process, you'll end up with a crappy digital process. But to be absolutely honest, neither Mr. Undeutsch nor I dreamt this up. This is actually a quotation from this chap, Torsten Dirks, who used to be chairman of the board of Telefonica. He's now an executive manager at Lufthansa. And in November 2015, he came up with this catchy quotation when I read this. I laughed, first of all. I thought it was witty and rather provocative. And the underlying premise here is one that I think we need to bear in mind when looking at the mice sector, particularly at inquiries and reservation processes, for example, for conference hotels and event locations. So I'm going initially to be giving you an overview of the current state of play, looking at how our market is currently developing against the backdrop of online platforms. So if you look at the portal situation, there's always three people or three groups who are involved. There's the target groups, the event planners, for example. Then you have the portals, a whole host of different portals which act as intermediaries with their technical solutions. Then you have the event venues and conference hotels who want to benefit from the whole process. So I took the buyers and the event planners and put them in two, three different categories. First of all, you have what I would call the corporate planners who have a strategic approach. They spend a budget, double digit millions per annum, basically. Companies where there's really good sales, those are the customers that they're aiming for. But be careful, those customers also have much more ambitious expectations. They're looking for more from a portal. They want to have event guidelines and sales processes stored. They want to have special corporate rates, special rates for themselves. Then you have the maverick buyers. They're the ones who do work or should work on the basis of their procurement guidelines, but don't for various different reasons. So they circumvent the standard processes, and that means they're actually in the third group, the huge heterogeneous group of event planners who really act across the board. Some of them organize just small events and just a handful of them. Some of them organize a lot of large events. We're looking at around 40,000 event planners in Germany who view themselves as event planners. That's their self-image. So if you take these three groups, the overall turnover in 2016 is 82 billion euros turnover. Now, people think we're just a small business. It's 10 times more than the German armaments industry. 
so that's quite impressive. Then you have the online portals, or what we perceive as online portals in public perception. I've divided these up into categories as well, so that you can see which event planner books via which portal. First of all, we heard about the strategic buyers. They have high demands. They want to have corporate solutions which can stand up. Do not at this. Sieven Alum, Mice Portal, just to cite a few. They are ones that are audit watertight, so to speak, and can offer that level of quality. Those are the real online portals, if you ask me, because the entire inquiry and booking process occurs without any manual intervention of a support team. And often you'll find that they have public portals which can be used by any event planner for booking something here and now. A MICE portal has got an open shop front so to pay meeting masters. For example, sometimes the names change. So the same technology is used, but not as a separate closed corporate solution, but for planners who simply want sporadically to submit an inquiry into book. And then come a whole host of inquiry portals. These are the portals which, for you as event planners, are often perceived as being just the same as the first category I cited. You enter an inquiry online, but very often the manual intervention of a support team does still remain necessary. They're generally the sort of portals, you know, you put in the basic data, destination, dates, number of individuals, and then flash animated images whiz across the screen. Hotel chains scoot backwards and forwards. You have the feeling that a huge database worldwide is being searched. I have to say, any web designer who's worth his or her salt can produce something like this nowadays, and it's all fake. They're not searching a huge database. It just creates the impression that there is an enormous database and everything is running live. Now, that sounds a little negative, but I have to say they do have a good reason to exist, because with manual support and higher service levels, they've got different characteristics and different benefits from the first category. And last but not least, there's another category of online portals, which I call information portals. Those are really the portals envisaged to make event locations and conference hotels and other hotels as well bookable online. And the idea is to put them directly in touch with clients as well. Direct contact is very important there. Information portals often don't work on the basis of a commission, for example. They have listing fees for the clients, and that's how they fund their business. Others attempt to keep all of the communication online. That's partly because they're commission-based models. So right the way through the process from the inquiry to the conclusion of the booking, you've got the whole process in there online. So that's a general background overview of the situation clustering the various different kinds of users and different kinds of portals. The question, though, is how digital is all this? Have we already moved a step further? I can tell you the first online portal in the MICE segment for booking conference hotels was in, set up in 2003. And I can also tell you that little has changed since then. So let's come back to Mr. Dirks and his quote. And as I said, that quote encouraged me to 
to about my own thoughts on this. I wrote a blog post on it, actually. And funnily enough, every single month I get quite a lot of hits for that blog post. And then I took a look at the booking process in our market, and I can tell you something. We are all now active on the internet, but the process per se has not changed. We've simply switched medium. What we used to do with a fax is something that we now do via a form that's not in fax form any longer, but is on the internet, to put it very simply. But the process has remained just the same. You sent a fax to the hotel, perhaps the hotel responded by fax, and we collected the various different offers. We asked for the contract. And this whole process is one that hasn't changed at all by being online. So digitalization, I'm sure Mr. Undeutsch, my colleague, will be talking about that in more detail in a moment. We don't have a higher degree of automation with the new digital process. So the process per se, in my view, has not changed. Our group organized an event last year which made this very clear again as well. We got together with Visit Berlin Partner Hotels and Visit Berlin Convention Partners, and we organized an event there, the idea being to get the message across. It's called Verständnis, promoting comprehension. We wanted to get into a discussion with hotels and to ha have an exchange of views with them to see what both sides needed, where the problems lay, why things didn't function in some cases. One of the main problems, as far as the event planners went, was that they said, well, you know, hotels you're always talking about within 24 hours and speed and all the rest of it. But for many years now, the same problems existed. We don't really get offers that are demand-driven. They're very slow. Mr. Chernick leapt to his feet. He's from Visit Berlin Partner to Hotels, and he's a hotel director from of Pullman Schweizer Hof Hotel. He said, well, you know, you have to understand how our world looks nowadays as well. You can get the same inquiry sent through six, seven, eight hotels channels. So there's all these different channels, first of all, to inquire about. The capacities, the capacity is free, and then whoever's in charge from our office will call the key account manager and they'll send the inquiry, but there'll be these internships who'll be busy as well and they'll send out the inquiry a few more times as well and hope that they might get it cheaper somewhere else. So at the end of the day, you have the very same inquiry exactly the same event being sent through a plethora of different channels. And what does that mean? The consequence is that if you get the same inquiry seven to eight times, you have to respond to all of those channels and manage them. But the effort's much greater. It becomes actually a lot less efficient. You increase the level of inefficiency. And by now, I think it's fair to say that there's about a hundred, indeed more than a hundred, such online portals. We're always talking about online portals in public discourse, and I hope that my introduction may clear to you that one online portal is not quite the same as another. You can't simply equate them. So these are the ones where I paid to be able to show them on the screen. It's a very small excerpt. There's more than a hundred online portals. And all of them work on the submit an inquiry principle, just like it used to work. And ultimately, that means more effort from those who are providing these travel services. Which of you come from hotels? Raise your hand now if you're from the hotel business. Can you confirm that the banquet department, for example, gets heaps of inquiries? 
and I guess it's tempting to delete them sometimes, so the delete button must be rather popular with you. The question is, is this something that travel operators can actually still manage, and is there any genuine added values? And I must say that over the last few years and decades, the process hasn't changed. So if you look at this, you'll see there's a plethora of different portals. But what happens next? How can we move ahead? Hang on a minute. Things have already changed over the last 18 months. There has been a lot of change. What has changed? How might the process look in the future? How might it be digitalized and digitalized properly? Well, that's something that Felix on Deutsch is going to tell you about in a moment. Thank you very much, Bernd. Thank you for giving me the floor. Hello. Welcome. What I would like to do right now is something different from what uh, Bernd did. So he just uh, described these crappy processes. And what I did was that I sat down and thought about what the other industries did. How did the other industries optimize their processes? And how did the other industries at the end of the day have increased their uh, uh, their productivity and efficiency and things like that. And I looked at three points, and I think that um, you all know what a supermarket is like, so you all, you all know that you, sometimes you have to stand to queue up if, if in front of the uh, cashier. So this is a kind of a long process, and it's a manual process, and people pay in cash. And what about today, or what about the future? What will supermarkets look like in the future? Maybe you've seen that already. Some of you have seen that already. Amazon Go is one example. Amazon Go is just on a trial run in Seattle. So what do I do? So I have my app and I just check with all the products I would like to do. So and within a few minutes, I have all the products uh, together and then I leave. And that is, I don't need to pay there. And, but I have paid because the uh, shop understood, it, quote unquote, what I did and they have access to my d digital wallet and I'm paying in a digital way. Some other process would be, not really sure what's wrong with the presentation, says the speaker. So what about banking? So you knew what it was like in the past. So you, how do you do a bank transfer? So you go into a bank and you, you fill in this form and um, Fortunately, if you are lucky, then you, you you don't switch figures around and you write everything correctly. And the banks are open from 9 to 5. And how do we do it today? Using an app. I enter there and then I find out who I want to transfer the money to. And usually I can avoid spelling errors because um, I usually have them save the names that of people or as institutions that I need to transfer money to. And then in real life example, how did we find the man or woman of our lives? Maybe some of you know this. So average age, I'm not really sure. Well, some young people here as well. So we had some discos, student parties, manual processes, so to speak. I, as a male participant, I know that. So you just have to invest a lot in drinks. And uh, you just hope that at the end of this evening, the woman that you're interested in says, yes, this is my phone number. We can get, take the next step. And the young people here, so I think that you are at the beginning of 20s, and you do it the work this way fully automatized and no romance there. So you swipe left, swipe left, you swipe right, just like Tinder. And we could continue forever. So by the way, so what's wrong with this guy? It is not that this is the process I would prefer. So I'm more old school. And I went through this former process. But I believe that this is how the young generation works. And what do these three processes have in common, banking, retailing, and dating? And how can we translate that into the problems that we have with conferences and meetings and e events? And I looked at this issue, and I found out that all these three processes and services have three things in common. First of all, they're very fast. These processes run very fast. 
why is that the case? Why do we have to do everything so fast? The reason is that for in the past few years, online shopping, online banking, and, and others, we have already increased efficiency, and people expect now that everything will be even faster. Sasha Logo said that uh, in Berlin during the Mexico, and I think it was, he called it a digital impatience because online processes are relatively quick, so usually quicker than the offline ones. So people do become impatient digitally, and so then they expect that everything has to work like that, but has to be quick. So when you are on a lunch break and so it's only 45 minutes and so you need to be very efficient, you don't want to wait 50 minutes for your food and or queue up in a restaurant, you just want to go walk in there, get your food and then get out. So maybe as my background, I live in London, I didn't come from there, and in some restaurants they, there is a promise that during your lunch break that you will get your food within two minutes, so to go, so to speak. So there's a, a maximum time of two minutes that um, you will get your food or you'll get your money back. So these online processes have developed some kind of a digital impatience, which again resulted in impatience in general. So in this banking by example and this Tinder, by, uh, Tinder example, I'm sorry, there are cases in point as well. And then simplicity. All these three processes are simple as such. Tinder, everybody can do that, swapping left and right. Everybody can, easy. Why is it relevant? Why is it important that things are simple? And the background is to that. We are confronted with a flood of news, messages, WhatsApp, text messages, emails, Facebook news, Facebook messages. I don't think that um, StudiVZ sets this German app. I don't think that this exists any longer. Great, one last channel. But the problem is that we're flooded, swamped with information and news. So this is some kind of a digital overkill. And the problem that we have through this is that nobody has time for anything else to really look into matters. So solutions need to be very simple and intuitive. For example, we're in, a, in the conference fields. I don't need, need to fill in a form which says what type of seating do you want, what uh, type of uh, rooms do you want, what do you want to have a main room and then side rooms, and, and you go, hey, what does that mean? I only want to have a meeting room. And so these requests are much too complex. They're not simple enough and not intuitive enough. There are quite a lot of requests for information, and so the process itself becomes entirely complex. But the processes should be su super simple and super intuitive and run smoothly. Third point, automation. Automation means that standard processes can be run through automatically. Let me give you an example for this. When you, you're falling asleep, aren't you? So is everything fine with you? So the chairs here seem to be quite uncomfortable. I'm sorry about that. Automation means, let me give you an example. Uh, who used my taxi? So it's a German app here. Uber, anybody used Uber? Did you have to call a taxi center to call your taxi with my taxi and Uber? They have the uh, apps that understand where you are and where the next taxi is. And the taxi has become totally fully automated with the Uber services. The uh, taxi driver using quite a lot of money to bribe the uh, taxi central uh, center agency then gets most of the work. So automation wins. So the question is, how does that link to mice? What about the requests for conference planning? How can we make it as, eff as efficient as Uber or Tinder and others? First point would be live pricing. Live pricing means that when the reception lady at the hotel enters some data into the system and she gets a price immediately. It's some kind of an intuitive process. So she might 
have some idea at the back of, the, of her head and then she, she say that the, the run of time would be uh, six months and the group is uh, th 30 participants and then five people won't be there, so it's 25 people. But um, then they should be, be uh, running from Wednesday to uh, Thursday, but to Saturday, but you actually want to have your Wednesday off. So, but when you enter all these data, then you immediately get this in a machine when you have it automated, a result. When you translate that into a business, then the, this lady working on the requests for booking a, a hotel facility for your evening would make it easier for her. She would find prices and that would be in highly automated processes and by pressing a, a button she would have all the inf information at hand. And if this information could also be in the hands of you, the people in your company, so we learned from from band, you can have a lot of uh, preparation that uh, you you have to go through. And then you you said that you initially wanted to have uh, your meeting with 30, 30 people, but then you have 50 people, and then all of a sudden you have the CEO traveling there as well, so you need another hotel room the night before, and things like that. I mean, things change dynamically so when you enter the information yourself you don't need to call the hotel and ask for a room but you can find out uh, straight away so it's maybe the person you were talking to in the hotel um, is on holiday or she's already left the office and you can't reach her so this would be an, a, a way of making this inefficient process efficient second step would be availability if you have the information that I know how much it's going to cost according to all the business rules, run-up time, preparation time, and duration, things like that. The question is, is the hall then available, or is the hotel fully booked, or is somebody else there? But if we can manage in our mice world to find information on availability through the property management systems, for example, and banquet systems and others that exist in the hotel business, so that the banquet staff member, but also the client, would benefit from having an online version of this. Third component, booking live. We understood this is our price. Great, fantastic. Fantastic, it is also available, but then the question is, what are my conditions for booking? For example, terms of payment, whether the, you need to do, to wait for an invoice or it goes through your credit card already, things like that, spicing and others. If we can manage to cover all this, a crappy process would be turned into an efficient process. The conference world would be Amazon, Amazonized, Tinderized, or whatever you might want to call it. And then there you have these experts thinking, wow, great vision, but uh, meetings and events are much too complex. There are so many exemptions, so many special requests that you can never ever standardize them. We learned automation can only work when something can be standardized. When you can't standardize it to something, then you can't make it automatic. Well, full stop. In conferences and events, they're unique. You can't standardize them. But let the data speak for me. On the X axis, you see the number of the participants, and the Y axis on the left, you see the absolute share of events in Germany. That means what you see here, 75% of all the events in Germany have less than 30 participants. So that is standard business, boring, not sexy. You only need a simple meeting room, five people, BMO, flip chart, things like that. Who is an event planner here? Who works for an event agency? Right, sorry for you. Of course, you say that um, you also want uh, emotions in your conferences and events, and you want to transport your values, you want corporate identity in there. Right, fine, I agree. But I would just assume that this is on the right-hand side of this axis. There's part of the business that is highly standardized and that is highly not sexy. So we just need a meeting so because the CEO is um, flying in from somewhere. You need to meet him at the airport in Frankfurt and uh, need a um, meeting room quickly there. And that's it. That's reality. 
And the point is the following. So what about the event plans? What is their job going to be in the future? So what about the jobs of the banquet persons? Why should we pay them? The point is that on the left-hand side, you will save a lot of time because you're going to automize the processes and standardize it. But the time that you've saved there, so the majority of what you need to work on as the person responsible for organizing the conferences either in, in company or as an event planner. And then you have the, the others that with you can save on time and energy and also passion to use on the right hand side for all the the events that you need love for so that you need to to work on the details and to which you have a major budget for so i don't want to say that um, you you will become superfluous in the end but rather that you save time on the left hand side so that you have more time for the right hand side so, um, IP should not die out, but only on for the left part, I would say. Okay, you have understood that. And then you may say live pricing, I understand, live av availability, live booking. Okay, I got your point. I got that um, it would make sense to standardize these processes, but in 2020 or 2025, we'll never get there. But the reality is that it's already here. Some are using this right now. Just some examples here on the left-hand side. You see the purchasing people, so that is the demand side, and the right-hand side shows you the hotels that are already using these systems. I can only talk about those we are working with, of course. There are a number of other systems out there that work with hotels, with other service providers, and with clients. On the left-hand side, you see Deutsche Bahn, for example, and Tago and Deutsche Bahn is one of the biggest purchases uh, for meetings in Germany. And right now, in the, in the past six months, they w tested the system in their MICE processes, and slowly but surely, they are booking their events th through our system. Deutsche Bahn, who thinks that they have per day more than one meeting outside of their own meeting rooms? More than one meeting, the Deutsche Bahn, the German railway system. Who thinks that they have more than 10 every day? More than 10 meetings per day. More than 20 meetings per day. Who thinks that they have more than 20? Not that many show of hands. Let me just uh, do my math. So per year, they have 7,000 events that DB is running with using this crappy process, as was described by my colleague. So the person responsible for purchasing these services, they should be well advised to have a more efficient system. And then we have the hotels on the right-hand side, the best Western chain, for example. They wanted to implement a new system. And NH hotels, for example, they are starting to, uh, to run this live. And Lindner, for example, this is also an innovative chain in Germany. And they want to be up to speed with modern technology. And many others are following. It's not something for the future for 2020, but it is important today. It is already there. It is already in the market. And it is being spread, rolled out now. So much from the theoretical point of view. And now let's turn to the real thing. I can show you the system live, but in fact, I can't. But I prepared a video clip that we're going to watch, maybe just an information of what you're going to see. So it shows you the process from the perspective of a hotel, how this booking machine is implemented on the hotel's own software, for example, Lentner they make this software av available for their own clients and so that they can work through that. And the second part of the video clip shows you the, in, the work at, at an agency, how an agency tries to offer a market 
square, so to speak. Not only one hotel, but 34 hotels in Berlin, for example. So this video clip has two parts, and I'm going to do uh, my explanations, and I'm going to speak faster. Although I uh, I have pre-recorded this video, I'm, I'm trying to have my live commentary in addition to that. Let's get started. Maybe just a comment. So I was confused all day with the presentation because this is a presentation that we used uh, last time. So I'm sorry, band, we packed the wrong presentation, or maybe it was Mendy who did that. Let me think. Is that the Mitago video? I'm not really sure whether I should start with that or with something else. Well, don't worry. So I'll start with this. Look, okay. get your seatbelt on. Mitago, let's start with this. I can't find the video. Can you play it for me, please? I sent it all to you two or three weeks ago. You had all that time, and what happened? Nothing. All right, then. Not really sure. Maybe we can use Tinder while we're waiting. Maybe you can download this app so we could have some added value in the time that we're waiting. Ah, it's ready. Fantastic, so I don't need to go on speaking like this. Pause it, please. This is the Lindner website. This is the perspective of the of consumer getting onto their homepage. And they said that they went to convene in Hamburg on the 12th of April one day, and the number of presidents you can also find there. And the good thing is that uh, you'll get an immediate response to this. So the client presses search, then this is quite a broad request, a general one. And then this is what they will come up with, and then they will know what Linda offers, and then you can go into the details, and you can say, in fact, I want to change some features, like the equipment that I want to add, Beamer, flip chart, Wi-Fi, things like that. So you will get a new price straight away without having to call somebody, without any additional manual processes. Maybe you can add some catering for lunch, coffee breaks, and things like that, a new price immediately. Rooms, you can add them too, no problem at all. So we'll add 15 rooms, so maybe you knew it's uh, more than what you're familiar with because it's uh, only nine, I think, in your case, but uh, here we have 15 in our example. So you will get the price immediately with live avail availability and the capacity that is there. The client that can then go into even more details, finds the cost breakdown, and with uh, this hotel chains, the, all the individual services will be listed as well. And then the, your client can look at the pictures and then read all the feedbacks and evaluations and can book it straight away or save it and uh, double check with um, the bosses and then do the booking later on. And you can do all that without needing to pick up the phone and calling somebody. So if you can change your configurations right then or also later. Next example. So this is a marketplace solution. So this is something that uh, you can either use as um, of the final consumer or in company. The client might be on the phone and you are the in company organized planner event planner and you have access to the system as well. So you ask what the uh, client wants or you are the client yourself so you know what you want. You create prices and I uh, adjust them and then I do all my con configuration depend on the, the requests that I hear from the client and while the, your client is still on the phone, it's almost like Tinder now. I press the heart button, it's kind of the love button. Bam. So I can save this, this offer, and while the client is still on my phone, I can send these five saved offers that I have for them. Then by email, and it, I just go click, and the, while the client is still on the phone, they will receive 
the your email with all the offers doesn't have to need to wait for days but can look at the email with your offers straight away and then maybe change some details so this communication loop is no longer there it's right there everything is in one go so much from us do we have another slide no apparently not thank you very much for your attention if you have any questions of course you can always come and ask me and enjoy the rest of the ITB 2017 thank you